This is a week where exactly the right things fell into my lap at exactly the right time. I could not be more delighted. Hey Flosstube, I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. It is Tuesday. I think it might be August 13th. I'm pretty sure it's August. It'll be tomorrow by the time this goes online. I don't know. The date does not matter. But I like to give you the idea of whether you're watching a new video or an old video. My stitchy energy since the last update has been going into Southwest Mesa. And is it Mesa or Mesa or every time I talk about this thing, I hear my mean high school Spanish teacher in my memory. And it's just always that I'm saying it wrong, not how to say it right. I have worked my way up towards the building. And the more I got up towards this building, the more fidgety I got the more stressed I got. And I wasn't really having fun, and I kept going back down here to whatever this lovely plant is. I'm gonna look that up and figure out what this is so I can call it by its right name, instead of just calling it the bushes, the undergrowth, whatever I've been calling it. Because that's a way to avoid this. I figured it out. When I first started this 20 years ago, this is not that I have restarted from scratch. I started in the center of the project. So these cactuses and the edge of this building, that is where I made all of my mistakes and a very small portion of the stitching and I gave up. I think that's why I don't want to stitch it now. But I'm working at it and I think now that I know why I'm avoiding it, I'm a little less likely to avoid it. We'll see how that goes. But that is this week's working theory. Since the last time I showed you Lucinda Hawkins, what is this? Lucinda Hawkins something. I did the windows. I did the little patriotic bunting. I did a little more on the flower. Did the eagle. He, his head is there if you look closely enough. Same as real eagles against a pale blue sky, so I'm not going to fuss over it. I'm going to tea dye darker fabric and not have this problem again next time. But I'm having fun with it. I finished the roof of Aunt Betty's house on Blueberry Buckle Lane and because I had the thread out for this I filled in the windows on this one so I've kind of been switching between the two when I'm working on a color that is in both of them. And then because I hadn't worked on it since I don't know when I pulled out the Nevermore Raven from this year's just cross stitch Halloween issue. I got the bird done. I did some more on the moon and the more I stitch on the moon I'm seeing patterns that aren't as obvious in the printed pattern. They make more sense as you're stitching them than they do when you're just looking at a bunch of dots on a piece of paper. I'm enjoying this one so all I have left to do is finish the round of the moon then the word, then the branch that the bird is sitting on. That is not much at all. This is a small quilt project. I hate the quilt that we have been using on our bed. I have been looking for a suitable substitute for a while now, not making any progress, and it finally occurred to me that maybe I could use the crocheted counterpane Great Grandma made 50 some years ago. Nobody's ever used it. It has been carefully packed away as an heirloom. If I promised to be really, really careful with it, would it be okay to use it? I had almost convinced myself that it would and was working up the nerve to talk to other family members and see what they thought about this plan. And then I saw an ad for an estate sale. It was kind of a generic, lots of years accumulation, quilting fabric, sewing machines. Nothing about this ad really stood out other than that it was close to home. And I thought about going on Saturday. Then I looked at the map and realized that it was kind of isolated and kind of off the beaten path. And I decided to wait till Sunday so I could take the boys with me. That was a very good idea because this was not kind of off the beaten path. This was probably a mile further up into the foothills than the next house. It was on a narrow gravel road. It, it was a little intimidating. The house itself was lovely. 
and one of the first things I found in the house, well, the first thing I found in the house was all the lace doilies. Everything was $10 a bag, and by bag, they were doing big paper grocery bags. Do you know how many doilies you can cram into a big paper grocery bag? I now have all the doilies. I grabbed up almost all the doilies and almost all the vintage embroidery because it was a little later in the day on the last day of the sale and I was saving the stitches. And then there were a bunch of people in the sewing room so I went into the bedroom and I found this laying on the bed. Guys, it is a king size crochet counterpane. It is gorgeous. I am almost convinced that somebody made this and then wrapped it up to keep it as an heirloom, just like Great Grandma's was, because there is not a flaw in this. It is worsted weight that's heavier than the one my grandma made. I love it. We sort of unfolded it and tried to get a picture. I'll show you that at the end. It's huge. So it would have filled up an entire bag for $10, and I mean, that was fine. I sent one of the boys up with it to see how much it was, and they said $5, and that was fine. And then they said 75% off $5, and okay, I don't know what they're thinking, but I feel like <laughs> this was dropped right into my lap at exactly the moment that I needed it. Still trying to figure out if it is wool or acrylic so I know how to wash it, because we do not sleep under estate sale bedding unless we wash it first. This house was clean. I told you about the estate sale I went to last weekend, or maybe the weekend before that, where they had all the embroidery that was just kind of grimy. The fabric at this sale was all straight out of the quilt shop. There was a whole wall of shelves with pre-cut pieces that I don't know what this lady was working on, but I'm going to be working on it now. I got so much fabric because it was dirt cheap, it was high quality fabric, it was beautiful fabric. The quilting group I belong to is running a little low on donations these days, so I picked up a bunch of fabric. I'm going to use it to make quilts for them. What I can't use will get donated to them. I'm just giddy about it. I did a whole video and the video I probably should have held up the fabric and stuff more, but I was so giddy after we got home from that sale. And I got, I didn't bring it over here. Another lady in that room was asking if I was a quilter and there was a whole bunch of batting in the closet. I don't need batting right now. So I wasn't paying attention. Then out of the corner of my eye, in a canvas bag, I saw Q-Snap packaging. I got three brand new sets of Q-Snaps. One of them isn't even opened. These, the clamps loosen up with age. Mine are all going on 20 years old and I use them a lot. And these are like brand new from the store. They are tight. They are, I didn't even know what size they were. If all the pieces were there, I just bought all three all three packages and hope there was something in them that would mix and match with what I've already got. But it's three complete sets. So I am going to move, hopefully, this project onto this frame and I think that this frame is big enough for the whole thing. Oh, and last time I told you I wanted to knit a tablecloth. Doing that in the round requires a whole bunch of double pointed needles, which is, I have double pointed needles, I don't have the quantities of the size that this project would require. I do now. <laughs> I basically got all of the needles that would work for that. I left all the other metal ones because it's not my favorite thing to knit with, but I just, I am so delighted with this. I so feel like I was in the right place at the right time. Even my husband likes this bedspread. Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. I'm going to go stitch.